just a quick note before I get in with this review. I talk about Fraser Crane Day and my confusion about why it was September 11th when the show aired November 11th. I completely missed the writing over the final clip that talks about the real Fraser Day on September 11th. And I did some research about it, and apparently that was a genuine event held in Seattle on September 11th, 1997. So that is why Fraser Crane Day is September 11th when the episode aired. November 11th. So please ignore any confusion I have in this discussion when I mention the two dates. The 1000th show is the fifth episode of the fifth season of Frasier. This is directed by David Lee. This is the 100th episode of Frasier. And as always, there will be spoilers from now as I go through the episode and share some thoughts. And it's a, it's a really solid episode. I think it's probably one of the most memorable episodes, largely because we have a change of location. We are on location in Seattle for quite a bit of it, which is exciting, and I'll talk more about that when we get there. And it's it's really, really well done. It starts off in Cafe Nervosa, Fraser's getting all of the recognition, Niles isn't getting any attention, and then Martin and Daphne come in, and Fraser establishes that it's almost his thousandth radio broadcast. We're then down at KCL with a, a kind of sweet, kind of disturbing moment where there's a little teddy bear. Roz thinks it's from Fraser, which is understandable. Turns out it's from Roz. She gives him a hug and he says to her, you're going to make a good mother, Roz. Which I think he genuinely meant. But then he tried to feel her up and he was being pervy. And Fraser then comes in and Roz says that Fraser doesn't need to worry about any unwanted attention for the thousandth broadcast. She's handled it. And it's very clear that Fraser's a bit upset because he was hoping for some kind of event and recognition and attention. We're then at the apartment. Daphne is trying to get her new passport. So that part of the narrative was a little bit, it felt a little bit forced. It felt a little bit unnecessary. It wasn't really funny. I feel like they either should have not bothered putting it in or they should have done a little bit more with it because we come back to it a little later on. But it just felt either underdeveloped or unnecessary, but not to the extent where I didn't enjoy the episode or anything. I just didn't feel it was very necessary, and it wasn't that interesting as padding. Martin is asked by Fraser if he'll speak at the event that is now happening for Fraser, and Martin's happy to do this, which is really lovely. And then he gets a call, Fraser gets a call from Roz. The mayor is going to be at this event, and he's getting a key to the city, and there'll be a Fraser Crane Day. <laughs> <laughs> which I, I love as a concept. And just for information, this episode aired. Actually, I just Googled it and confused myself. So if anybody has any information on this, please feel free to share. The episode actually aired November 11th, but Fraser Crane Day, according to many sources, is September 11th. So I'm not entirely sure what that's about. If anybody can confirm, did I miss something in this episode? I don't think I did. If anybody knows why, please feel free to let me know. But either way, we do have this Fraser Crane Day declared in the episode, and Fraser is obviously very happy about this. Niles comes over with some news of his own that he doesn't think will top Fraser's news. Fraser doesn't say what his news is. To his credit, he temporarily allows Niles his moment, as Niles, well, his name was mentioned in a letter. That's basically it. But happy for Niles to have his moment. Niles then really milks the situation because they're down in Cafe Nervosa on Fraser Crane Day. And Niles wishes him a happy Fraser Crane Day and says that he was up late writing his Fraser Crane Day cards last minute. I rather enjoyed it. They then go for a walk as they have an hour until the event and Fraser wants to burn off some energy. And this is where they get to walk through Seattle. They go to Pike Place Market and... They, well, Fraser's shoes get damaged and Fraser needs to call Ross and say they're going to be late because he goes to get some new shoes. They lose track of time. And when he's calling Ross, the Space Needle is in the background, beautifully shot, really well done, cut to the event. There are so many people there, more than I would have expected, to be honest. And there are banners everywhere with Fraser's name. And I think they could have done a bit more with his face. They could have put his face up a little bit more. I think that would have been pretty cool. But obviously Fraser's not there, so the event starts without him, and Martin ends up having to read out his speech that Fraser gave him. I think they could have done a bit more with this as well, maybe taking some of that time with Daphne, Daphne's alien story, and giving it to Martin instead, because Martin starts to read out this speech that Fraser gave him. 
that Fraser basically wrote for him. And the audience is bored. They're not going, they're not buying into it. And it would have been so lovely if Martin realised this isn't working, throws the speech away and spoke from the heart about Fraser. I think that would have been so lovely and a much better, more moving use of time than the bit with Daphne. Daphne ends up talking to some city officials about how she's an alien and they take her away. And it's just, I didn't care for it. And I think they could have used the time a little bit better. Also, when Martin's reading the speech, it cuts to Eddie, who's sitting on a chair next to Daphne, and he gives this big yawn, and he's just absolutely adorable. Meanwhile, Fraser and Martin are having difficulty getting through Seattle to the rally. They end up taking money from a busker, which I don't love. This is because they'd been robbed. So obviously they don't have their wallets. So they have to take, well, I say have to, they do take money from a busker and they end up getting on the mon monorail and the monorail stops just above the rally. And unfortunately there's an electrical fault. So the monorail just before the stop they need is having to go backwards and they realise there's not much else they can do about it. And there's some lovely dialogue between them and they both admit their feelings about the situation and how Fraser was actually really excited about this and how he'd basically planned everything himself and then Niles, you know, Niles showed some support for him rather than the jealousy he'd been showing, which I thought was lovely. And ultimately they get off the monorail and Fraser gets a, a gets into a car with a driver saying he'll take him to this event and Niles Niles is left behind but Fraser on the way to the rally Fraser does what he does best and he listens to the driver who has all of these problems he has this life story this difficult situation he's in and that in itself of just allowing Fraser to listen to his problems was really lovely but they took it one step further as they pull up outside the rally and Instead of Fraser jumping out because he's late for his own event, he tells the driver, no, I have time. Continue telling me your story. And in that moment, Fraser realized what was most important about what he does. It's not the recognition. It's not the praise. It's not the fame. It's being able to be there for people. And I'm getting emotional. <laughs> being able to be there for people when they need him. And it was a a really lovely way to end things. We actually end with Kelsey Grammer singing the theme tune, which is pretty great. So it's a really great episode, really memorable, very well done. I don't know if I have any personal highlights. Eddie yawning on the chair was absolutely beautiful. And Fraser's excitement, Niles' remarks about Fraser Crane Day, I rather loved as well. Seeing a lot of Seattle, very, very beautiful. So the only thing I didn't like was the padding with Daphne's alien story. I think they could have used that time a little bit better. And as I said, my personal preference would be to give Martin a chance to speak from the heart just for a, f a few minutes, a few minutes at the most. And I think it would have been really well done. So in general, the thousandth deal is a brilliant way to celebrate a hundred episodes of Frasier. Of course, it's not a hundred episodes of Kelsey Grammer playing Frasier, which is pretty awesome. We're over, I think, over 300 episodes at this point. And I don't know where we'd be without the character or without the show. And this was a, a gorgeous way to celebrate it. The thousandth show is close to being perfect. Absolutely beautiful. If anybody knows why Fraser Crane Day is the 11th of September, please feel free to let me know. I may be missing something really obvious, and I apologise if I am, but definitely a delightful episode nevertheless.